We've designed a solution to mimic the traffic department briefings, and now we'll make it happen. We'll import several graphics assets, a new font, dialog data, and the mission title text, which we'll extract from the original binary. Then we'll create the objects and their interactions in GameMaker. Along the way, we'll have to build code that reads and interprets both our homemade storyboard and the instructions from the dialog files. If that's not enough, we'll also construct a parser to alter and display the dialog lines. This is the most brutal programming video in this series. Let's go into GameMaker and bring in the face sprites. We'll make a new group, then find the sprites. There's three files. Now the first file has 26 sprites and the other two have 27. We'll rename those and bring them in. Clean up the names. Now let's make a group for the PIC files. And bring those in. Maybe I'll just keep the name. Oh, never mind. I'll simplify them. Now let's look at the font we'll use on the banners. It's the C in file and includes the 26 letters, 10 numbers, and 4 symbols for a total of 40. Now we need to add the new sprite to our global font accessor. We'll call it Mission Font. I won't bother with the space this time around. GameMaker can handle it automatically. We have one more asset to bring in. We need a list of mission titles that are part of the static data in the binary. Let's go into Ida Pro and look at the titles. So under the string section, we can sort by first letter and drop down to the M's. Now here are the titles, but Ida doesn't make it easy for us to copy. So if we try to drop it in Notepad, we get the whole list. Now, it looks like we could easily scrape away all the excess, but we also have very wide lines of spaces, too. Then we have to do it for all three episodes, which are in different files. Now, there's a faster way using a quick and dirty Python script. You may notice this word start with PA. It says Pascal, and it means that the strings are stored in Pascal format, which isn't common today. It's easy for us to handle, though. Let's focus on the first mission. So in Pascal format, the strings aren't null terminated like in C. The first value of the string tells us the byte length. So that's this number here. What we'll do is sweep through the exe file looking for the word mission. That's this hex sequence. Then we'll copy the string of this length. All right, let's go. Let's open the file. We'll just climb a long if ladder matching the sequence. Uh, excuse my non-standard indentation. Then we'll print out the matching strings. Now in PowerShell, let's make sure we have all three episode binaries. All these other files here were generated by Ida since we have it open right now. Let's copy the script, start the interpreter, paste it in, and grab the target lines. Now there's some extra garbage, but we'll clean that up. I'll just put it here under the script for now. Let's do this for the other two binaries. I delete the script and we'll replace the repeating garbage with blanks. So B, apost B apostrophe and then just the apostrophe. Uh, there's a couple straggling lines, we'll delete those by hand. Looks like I missed a mission somehow. I'll leave a space for it. I'm really only concerned with the first few missions right now. Let's save it as mission title and drag it into the included files. That's it for all the assets, I think. 
It's nice to have an engine like GameMaker to manage all these resources for us. We won't need Ida Pro anymore. Alright, let's go back to our design document and find the master briefing object. We'll create this object here, which will create these child objects on demand. We'll create a new group for this room, and the new object. First we'll take care of this long list of constructor tasks. Not many surprises here, so I'll knock out the usual stuff. That's the keyboard and a reference to the game object. Now we'll define the object states, which are all of these and a state to finish everything. I'm going to put off the storyboard to last, so let's drop down to the mission titles. Now as simple as opening a file and reading in each title intro into an array sequentially. I think there's some lines missing, so I'll just read in most of them. 50 should be enough for this video. Uh, we can't straighten this out until we verify all the titles, so I'll leave a note here to remind us that we're not done. Close the file. Okay, now the dialogue files will be copied from the game without making any changes. I'll store the file lines in a list. And I'll also start an index list which we'll build as we load it. Basically I want a list that tells me where the starting point for each scene is in the larger list of all the lines. Oh, I forgot to drag in the dialogue files into Game Maker. It should be an easy drag and drop. Okay, now we want to read in the correct dialogue file for the mission. Now remember that each file is based on the episode. Ultimately, I'd probably just append all these files and read everything in one go. Now we start reading everything. Each line gets added to the data list. Then keep an eye out for the start of each new scene and add an indicator to the index list. Uh, we'll just keep track of the line number we're on and add the relevant line number to the index. Close the files. Let's start at line number one. That should be good for the dialogue reading. Now let's think about some of the variables we'll need. I think just the current state, which I'll leave at a dud value for now. I'll also make a briefing phase variable to track the next event in the storyboard. Now this should start at 1. This will make sense when we build the storyboard right now. I think I typed up a nearly good working model of the storyboard in the, la in the PowerPoint last time. Let's just copy that one. Okay, so here I called it event, but this is what I'll refer to using that phase variable. So let me change the case of this array. Oh, the sprite is wrong. Which one did we want? Number 11. Now we'll clean up the smart quotes. So our briefing object will follow this script. In a minute we'll program up these states to trigger the creation of the child objects. But first I need to make a script that drives the briefing object. We'll use it at the end of the create here and whenever we call a child object that's destroyed. We'll call it briefing next, and I'll scope it so that any object can call it. Just check to make sure that scope is valid. Okay, I'll pull out the current mission here just so I don't have to use this long line in the array below. So this line simply updates the state of the briefing object to the next state and iterates the event pointer to the next line in the storyboard. We'll always leave this phase variable pointing at the next thing need to be written and the next thing needed to be read in. Now putting it in this function helps us keep everything together. Let's put the script at the end. Let's make the destructor, just deregistering the keyboard and cleaning up those data structures.
Also, we'll kill all the child objects if there's any lingering. I don't have any objects to point at now, so I'll leave it blank in a, to avoid the uh, namespace misses. Then we'll just move to the next room. So in the step event, we process input and act on the states. Now the only input that matters here is the escape key that skips the whole room. Now we'll process the states that create all the child objects. The banner object is first. So we only want to do something if the banner object doesn't already exist. Now otherwise this object will just spin in place. Let me create the banner object to get the namespace ready. So we want to create the banner object, then read in the next line which should be the mission title. Be sure to advance the phase. Let's duplicate all this for all the other states since I think they follow the same idea. Now the SCR will read in the next four lines, one for the sprite background and three lines that we'll display. Kicking the phase forward each time, then dialogue, which needs only the scene number. Now finally, the PIC, which won't include any text. Ah, the dialogue will also need a reference to the scene number to find the right line in the index. Otherwise, we won't be reading from the right place in the dialogue array. Now, I won't create all the objects just yet, so I'll comment out this long block, and I'll undo it when we make the objects. So before we can test this briefing object, we have to add it to the room. We'll create the room in that script, and then add the object. Then we'll call the script from the room create event. Let's test this out. Now remember this object doesn't display anything, so all we can do is make sure it doesn't crash because I made a typo somewhere. Alright, well it didn't crash, so let's move on to the banner. We'll create the object here. Keyboard references and variables first, as usual. So this object is unusual in that it's being passed data from a parent object. I have to defer the processing of that data until the first step, so I'll set a one-time trigger variable here to control that. Alpha and fading variables. So these variables are the ones that compute in the first frame. Once we know the text, we can infer the size. I'm not sure we'll use the bottom two or not. An empty placeholder for the banner text. Now the usual destructor. Okay, here's the one-time event that we'll use to set the drawing positions. Let's set the correct font so the engine knows how to measure the next line. We'll need it to be roughly centered on the screen so that the exposition should be half of the view minus half of the text width. I'll just estimate Y at 45% of the view height. Maybe I don't need that other line information. Now we'll turn off the trigger variable and we'll never come back to this code block. I'll remove those variables that we didn't use.
we'll handle fading the same way we've always done. A fading out triggers the destroy event. We'll process the input like always, except we'll make sure any key triggers the fade out. And we only want to read input if both fading in or fading out are false. Now we'll draw the centered banner text. That should be it for the banner, let's try it out. Well that's a shame. Either it's not being created or it's not drawing correctly. I'll bet on the first problem. There it is. I meant to say we should create the banner only if the banner doesn't exist. It wasn't being created at all. So this means I messed up the copy and pastes too. Let's try again. Okay, monospace font because I forgot to remove the black background on the font again. Game Maker thinks the fonts are all the same width. Also, I hit the space bar and it's not fading out, so there's an input issue. Let's fix the font and check out the input processor. Oh, I didn't finish the predicate on this statement. I probably shouldn't do it this convoluted way in the first place. Okay, looks good. Now we can move on to the SCR object. We'll try to recreate this screen. As usual, we'll do the create, destroy, step, and draw events. Keyboard and reference. We'll need variables for the four items we pass to the object. That's the screen sprite and the three text lines. Alpha and fading. I'll also fix the text positions on draw. Destroy unregisters and iterates the briefing object. Nothing really new in the step event. I'll call the drawing render since we have several elements we want to incorporate the scene. There's the background sprite, the text shadows, under the actual text, then the fading black rectangle. I'll draw the text shadows offset down and to the left. Actually, we've used shadows enough now that it probably deserves its own script that automatically offsets the shadow. Now for the regular text. And finally, the rectangular fader. Let's add the SCR object to the main briefing object. All right, there's a namespace collision. I'll take care of that.
Well, that looks good to me. Now we'll just copy the SCR object for the pick object. Now the big differences here are that there's no text lines to draw and the sprite doesn't take up the full screen, so we'll have to manually center it. We'll do that by calculating the center on the first step, just like the banner. Now we can't really test the pick in the first mission, so just push the I believe button, we'll drive on. Finally, there's the big scary dialogue object. We'll need variables for every element in the scene. Let's do the create event, keyboard states and variables. I don't think I'll need a direct reference to the game object. These states correspond to the dialog management. We'll need an alpha variable and the state holder. Then the scene number passed from the main object. Then the index to the scene line that gets looked up in the index and put here. Now for the elements in the scene. We'll need a pair of variables to hold the face sprites then the names, then the unique codes for the faces to match the dialogue. We'll hard code a text color for each. Then finally a variable to show the active speaker. Now I'm going to put in some variables that we'll use for the text buffer. We need to know the line height for drawing the line spaced, then our current drawing position so we can sweep left to right, then some variables about what a full line looks like versus the current display. Now we'll make the multi-line buffer that's repeatedly drawn on the screen. Now I'm going to do this the quick and dirty way with a flat array that will scroll. The most elegant solution would probably be a ring buffer made from a circularly linked list moving a pointer. In GameMaker we can simulate that with a flat array and an index pointer that we can take the modulus of. I'm not too concerned about elegance though, so I'm just going to make a flat array and always draw the first element at the bottom and then use a function to push everything up to a new line. Destroy the usual suspects. Hmm, now I didn't put in any fading variables, so I'm just going to fade in if we're doing anything but ending the scene. Now I only want to accept commands if we're waiting. And a key should move us to any key should move us to writing. I'll put something here for escape, but really the parent object will destroy everything anyway. Now we'll decide what happens when we're reading from the dialog file or writing to the screen. Finish is easy, so I'll start there. Fade out and destroy. So if we're reading from the dialog file, we'll need to process the control characters from the file. We'll read in the line and determine its length. Then we'll focus on the first and second character in the line since they might be control characters. We'll switch on the first character and we're interested in these hex addresses. Pausing and ending the scene are easy since they both push us to new states. Now if we get the code to set up the scene, we need to read in the information to set the actors. And actually I want to make an escaping function for this character because the number will be off by one. Now also there's a problem with reading in certain characters from a text file and I'll deal with that later. It won't matter for mission one.
Now, same thing for the right face. Now, the hex 2 code means that we have a line of text incoming and we need to pull off the active speaker and change the color. Sometimes there's a blank line, so I want to treat that a little differently by just scrolling everything. Which reminds me, I need that scrolling function. Again, this is about the most basic way to handle it. It performs linearly with the size of the buffer, whereas a ring buffer concept is constant time. Something to think about depending on your application. So if we're blank, we'll scroll. If not, we start reading in a new line by figuring out what the full line looks like, resetting our drawing cursor, and moving to the writing state. Now the drawing concept is easy. If we're not done drawing a line, we continue drawing the line. But we have to deal with the problem that the text line and the buffer won't fit on the game screen well like it did in the original game. Now, I don't want to break in the middle of a word, so I'll compare the line we've already drawn with the size of the screen. If we covered, say, 80% of the screen and there's a space, we'll use that to shift to the next line. Now this is a quick solution that should work in the majority of cases without having to actually scan the width of every word. If we're not scrolling, we keep drawing. Okay, now let's connect all the points on the scene. We'll draw the text lines from the bottom up, then draw the faces, each on their own half of the screen. Then we'll put the names on the faces, and we'll fade out the non-speaking face by drawing a black rectangle. Then we'll fade the whole scene. Now, I believe these names actually sit centered on both halves, so at one-fourth and three-fourths of the view width. The fader rectangle needs to be in the top quarters of the screen. All right, let's try this monster out and see if it works. Okay, it looks like we're stuck here. It picked up the information for the left face, but not the right. So we're reading it correctly, but it just didn't continue. Wait, did I forget to advance to a new line during the reading phase? Yeah, that's the problem. Now working with a huge switch statement always derails my train of thought. It's a good idea to finish the top layer of code before jumping to the cases. Looks like there's a typo of some kind. Wow, I completely made up that array name. I must have been saying one thing or doing another at the time.
Now we're moving. This looks like it should. Ah, so there's still a minor problem with the parser. I'm pretty sure this is from starting a new line in the dialog file, but we're on the same line in the text buffer. We need to add a space, but only if there isn't already a space there. Otherwise, we'll get a double space. Man, I hate all the edge cases that creep into parsers. I'll remind myself of that here in the comments. And we make it through the scene. If I had the sound on, we'd hear music for the mission room. I think I'm calling it done for this video. We have a working dialogue sequence and it looks very close to the original. After the scene, it drops us into the mission room. Now one point I didn't cover is that I didn't fully build out the face escape script as I wanted. There's a bug now that we can't see in this briefing, but it shows up starting around mission 5. The text reading process isn't capable of reading certain ASCII control characters from the text file. I'll push that problem off until later though. Next time we start the fun part, the action gameplay room. <laughs>